now faces the prospect of becoming the first president ever to be impeached twice. Authorities have tracked down several men made infamous in photos like this and videos, including one man who carried away Speaker Pelosi's lectern, a man wearing that horn hat and bear skin, and another in a QAnon shirt. All this comes as shocking new video just further reveals how violent Wednesday's riot was. A warning, it's disturbing, it's dramatic. It shows an officer being crushed in the violent mob. Now we're told that officer suffered non-life-threatening injuries, but that was horrific. And so is this. Rioters also heard calling for the vice president of the United States to be hanged. Let's head straight to the White House now and CNN's Jeremy Diamond. So all this, Jeremy, comes as President Trump is being blamed now by both sides for inciting this violence. His Twitter is gone for good, and now House Democrats are planning to introduce articles of impeachment come Monday. What is the latest from there? Uh, well, Anna, with uh, 11 days left in his presidency, this does appear to be the weakest and most vulnerable that we have seen President Trump in his four years in office, uh, besieged on all sides uh, with calls for resignation, not only from a majority of Democrats, but also from some Republicans, including uh, Republican Senator uh, Lisa Murkowski, Republican Congressman uh, Adam Kinzinger. Uh, so you are seeing some pressure for the president to resign. Uh, and if not that pressure, then there are these calls for his impeachment or for the use of the 25th Amendment uh, to remove him from office or strip him of his presidential powers. And so at this moment uh, of vulnerability, you're also seeing a president increasingly isolated. He is facing this wave of resignations from senior officials in his administration, including two cabinet secretaries. And now he has also been stripped of his one outlet for attacks, for venting, for whatever you want to call it, uh, that we see the president do day in and day out. Uh, last night, the president, after being banned from Twitter, uh, he tried to use the post account, his official government account on Twitter, uh, to uh, attack Twitter and uh, to uh, essentially say that he was going to look for alternative ways of getting his message out. And the president decrying in a message, quote, we will not be silenced, uh, clearly bothered and angry uh, by this ban on uh, Twitter. Uh, now, uh, the president, though, uh, is not really reflecting on his role in inciting that mob, that riot that we saw on Capitol Hill. Uh, instead, what we've seen from the president in terms of any reflection on what he's done over the last week is some reflection on that video that he posted on Thursday night. This is not the first video we saw in which he said that he loved these great patriots who were on Capitol Hill. This is the one where he condemned the attacks on Capitol Hill uh, and he committed himself to a peaceful transfer of power on January 20th. Uh, according to our sources, the president appears to have expressed some regrets of actually issuing that video on Twitter, uh, which tells you everything you need to know about where the president's head is at right now. Anna. Jeremy Diamond at the White House, thank you. Over on Capitol Hill right now, leading House Democrats are not just talking impeachment for President Trump. They're actually planning to start the impeachment process as soon as Monday, if the president is still in office then. Our senior congressional correspondent, Manu Raju, is on Capitol Hill. Manu, just a few minutes ago, I spoke with California Democrat Ted Lieu. He told me right here on CNN he fully expects a vote to impeach the president a second time. And he also says that some Republicans are on board. What else can you tell us? Yeah, and that will be the question is how many Republicans ultimately vote for this. We're already getting indications. Some want the president out of office, a Republican like Adam Kinzinger of Illinois, who's been sharply critical of the president's conduct after the November elections. Most House Republicans are still on Trump's side, but will any others break ranks? That'll be a question. Another question is when will they officially say they will definitely impeach this president? Because all signs are pointing to that, that President Trump is, will have the dubious distinction of being the only president in American history who will be impeached twice by the House of Representatives. Now, things are expected to move 
pretty quickly. On Monday, that article of impeachment will be introduced. It will accuse the president of inciting an insurrection. It will detail his actions after the elections and detail his efforts on Wednesday, his comments on Wednesday that led to the incitement of that mob that came to Capitol Hill and led to multiple deaths, including one of a United States Capitol police officer. Now, after that is introduced, then the legislative process will move forward, including an a, a effort by the House Rules Committee to set the parameters for the floor debate, which could occur by middle of next week when the full House would vote. Now, at the moment, there are 180 co-sponsors, Democrats, who have signed on to this resolution to impeach the president. They need a majority of the House. There's expectation they would do that because 222 Democrats currently serve in the House. But the question will be, what happens then? If the president doesn't step down by then, there's no indication or expectation that the Senate would have come back before it's scheduled to return on January 19th to have that impeachment trial. Mitch McConnell telling his colleagues privately that essentially that is not going to happen unless all 100 senators agree to that, which will not happen. So that means that the impeachment trial, Anna, could be kicked into post-January 20th, maybe January 20th itself in the afternoon or January 21st when Joe Biden is president, when Democrats have the Senate majority at that point, the early days of the Trump administration, uh, the Biden administration could be filled with the efforts to convict Donald Trump, efforts to prevent him from coming, re returning and running for office again. So all those things will still have to play out in the days ahead. But at the moment, Anna, Democrats pushing full steam ahead to the president's second impeachment. Anna. Before I move on to Congressman Clyburn to talk about just that, I do want uh, our viewers to know and show them something else. This is an image that was taken on Wednesday, some video from Wednesday on Capitol Hill during the siege of the Capitol. Members of Congress were forced to huddle in a secure location in pretty tight quarters, and several men and women, all Republicans, are being offered masks. They refuse to wear them. What are you hearing about this today, Manu? Yeah, at least a blunt Rochester is the Democrat there in the red who was trying to hand those masks out to those six Republicans who were all in a secure location with other Democrats and Republican members following the mob coming into Capitol Hill. There are rules in the House that require members to wear masks, aides to wear masks, reporters to wear masks when they are walking through the halls of the House or they're seated in meetings like this, clearly in violation of that. They refuse to wear it. One Congressman Mullen, uh, Mark Wayne Mullen, told Lisa Blunt Rochester, I don't want to get political here. Others there in the picture, including Scott Perry of Pennsylvania, rejecting the uh, the offer of a mask. Andy Biggs of Arizona, Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia, conservative Republicans, uh, who, Greene herself, a freshman who has gotten into fights on the House floor about whether she should she should be required to wear a mask, in which she is, according to the rules. And of course, Anna, the big reason why this place, Capitol Hill, has been a bit of a hot spot for COVID-19. It has spread from member to member to aides and others. That's why the rules are there to wear mass but these members define them I don't know. and yet uh, we're still seeing records broken when it comes to the number of americans who are dying every day now more than 370,000 americans have lost their lives to the coronavirus thank you Manu raju one question we still really don't have answers to is how a group of trump supporters turned domestic terrorists were able to break into the u.s capitol a building that should be among the most secure in the world both parties want answers. We're learning Democrats are now raising questions as to whether some Capitol Police aided the rioters and were complicit in the insurrection. Among those raising this possibility is House Majority Whip James Clyburn. He's with us now. Congressman, all these allegations that some Capitol Hill police officers may have been complicit in this attack, it's stunning. What have you learned that makes you think this is even a possibility? Well, thank you very much for having me. What I think is very, very clear, irrespective of whether or not there was complicity here, there was a tremendous dereliction of duty. We are where we are in this country today uh, with COVID-19 because of a lack of leadership. And I don't know whether or not uh, the head uh, of the Capitol Police, uh, the Sergeant of Arms, in both the House and the Senate, and maybe they uh, are taking on the leadership uh, practices uh, of the uh, uh, President of the United States. Because it's very clear to me uh, that uh, they were derelict uh, in their duties uh, to their employees, or, or should I say, uh, to their rank and file members, and they were derelict in their duties uh, to the Congress of the United States. When I drove onto the Capitol 
uh, Wednesday morning around 8.30 a.m., uh, trying to get there in time for my 9 o'clock meeting uh, where we were going to talk about whether or not we uh, had everything in place to protect members. I noticed that there wasn't anything different from it was when I drove onto the campus the day before. I expected to see perimeters established uh, that would prevent uh, any kind uh, of activity like we saw. It was not there. Those kinds of orders must come from on high, and it was not there. And then we go to the meeting, and I ask Zola Offren, who uh, chairs House Administration, uh, for us, and she said she had been assured that everything was in place to protect members. It was not there. And later in the day, when I participated in discussions between the leadership uh, of the uh, security forces uh, and the leadership of the House Democrats, we were getting mixed messages. So something was derelict here, and I think that those resignations which have been submitted uh, were very, very deserving. And I would hope uh, that the new leadership that comes in will be a little more diligent in carrying out their duties and responsibilities to keep the capital safe, not just for members, but for visitors, for staff, for those people who have business in that building.